And when Jesus Christ is at the heart of your life, when Jesus is at the center of your life, when Jesus is in his rightful place in your life, your perspective on this life begins to change. You start to not focus on the things of this world. You start to desire to be with him. You long to be with him. To meet him who was born in Bethlehem. To meet him who was laid in a manger. To meet him who performed miracles on earth. To meet him who cast out devils. To meet him who raised the dead. To meet him who healed the sick. To meet him who opened up blind eyes. To meet him who was wounded for our transgressions. To meet him who was bruised for our iniquities. To meet him who took my sin upon him and died on a cross for me. He was dead, and now look, he is alive forever and ever, and he holds the keys of death and Hades. And because he lives, I live, and the Bible tells me that my life is in Christ. Jesus wants to be at the center of it all in your life. The Bible tells us that all comes from God. Psalms 112 verse 3 Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. The book of Psalms 112 describes the blessed state of the righteous in the following manner. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Jesus wants to be at the center of it all in your life. Matthew 6 verse 33 But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The verse's meaning is as direct as it sounds. We are to seek the things of God as a priority over the things of the world. Then we open ourselves to great blessings. Jesus taught that our focus should be away from this world, its status and its lying allurements, and placed upon the things of God's kingdom. Scripture further explains the kingdom of God and its righteousness this way. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. God has promised to provide for his own, supplying every need but all comes to pass when Jesus is at the center of it all. Philippians 4 verses 19 to 20 Know this, my God will also fill every need you have according to his glorious riches in Jesus the Anointed, our liberating King. So may our God and Father be glorified forever and ever. Amen. God has to be at the center of it all in your life. History shows us that he cares according to Genesis 48 verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, 
the God which fed me all my life unto this day. Deuteronomy 8, verses 3 to 4. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Nehemiah 9 verse 15 And gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. God's perspective of our need has eternity in view, and not only embraces the daily bread we require today, but the eternal blessings that are ours in Him, which lie beyond the grave and into the eternal ages to come. Is Jesus at the center of all that you are doing? Is He at the center of your faith, the righteousness, and the kingdom of God? 